Michael Griffin is a nomad and has traveled America for the last 25 years living off the land and learning the ancient ways of survival from Indian tribes from all over the country. The information in this video is gained from real world experience and not from theory. He truly lives this life full time and has an immense amount of plant knowledge I wanted to share with my YouTube friends. The video is given in a mundane setting, but I assure you that it is golden information that every survivalist needs to know. Please finish the entire series as there are four parts and pay attention to the wisdom he is passing on to us for free. Thank you, Michael. Much respect. Robert, Sigma 3 Survive. Hello, um, this is part four of medicinal and edible plants and useful plants. Uh, you might want to go back and retrace all the way if you come to this video. Um, you need to watch the other ones first. But the last part of that, I was talking about poisons. If you um, get poisons, um, you want to make sure that um, you can get the poison out of you by vomiting, sticking your finger down inside of you. Um, then you want to make sure you have a high starch diet. The best, um, I didn't mention, while well, I was mentioning charcoal and stuff, putting charcoal down there, that's a poison that you use in the hospital and the ER to get rid of certain poisons. Um, um, Tylenol poison and stuff like that, you use milk thistle, mushroom poison and LSD poison. We use milk thistle to actually stop it in its tracks through damaging your liver. So um, you can use those things. The next thing to do is carry Benadryl out in the woods with you, um, lots of it, because if you're coming across a lot of plants and you're having an allergic reaction to this plant, it may be totally safe to eat, but what if you're having an allergic reaction? Um, you can take that Benadryl and stop. Liquid Benadryl works a lot quicker than tablets. Uh, you can get gel caps and just put it in your mouth and bite down it real hard. Um, children's um, um, little tablet ones where you can just pop, twist it, and drink it. That's easy to carry out in the woods without getting everything sticky. So make sure you have lots of Benadryl. If you don't have Benadryl, you can find antihistamines. Um, vitamin C is an antihistamine. You can take about 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. It's an antihistamine. Coffee is an antihistamine. Tea is an antihistamine. Um, um, Mullen, if you know what mullen is, it loosely grows around railroad tracks and it has this big, leafy, um, fuzzy, leafy um, leaves in a basil um, thing where it's all round and it's just all down on the ground flat and it grows this long stalk, has this big, long seed head with all these little tiny um, little places where the seeds fall out. You shake it, tiny little thousands of seeds will just pop out. Um, the leaves there, um, if you boil that into a water on um, tea, that's an antihistamine too. That's nature's antihistamine. That's nature's Benadryl. Um, Mormon tea can be used as that. Um, Pseudophon Benadryl is, um, is um, Benadryl, and Benadryl, if out of Mormon tea out in the desert, is pretty much the same thing. You can use that as well. So, um, but carry Benadryl with you. That's a, and that's a good thing. And always have charcoal of some sort. Maybe carry you know, something that's very starchy um, that you can eat very quickly. I like to carry those um, mashed potato mixes that are like 99 cents a bag. You can mix that with some cold water and instantly eat it. It's not going to taste good, but it will keep the poisons down um, after you've been vomiting. Um, stick your fingers, vomit with charcoal, vomit. Um, any high um, starch diet, a bag of potatoes, um, take your Benadryl, you're set to go. Um, it's probably going to stop in its tracks. Um, if you're getting high um, uh, plants like ginseng, which well, I was trying to mention it earlier, you don't want to be playing around with dog band and, and ginseng oil, um, without knowing what it is. Um, dog band is, uh, is poisonous, but you can make fiber rope and stuff and be safe, but when you start messing around with jimson weed, um, some people call it thorn apple, a dotro, um, it's a scientific name for it. But if you even touch that plant, you're instantly absorbing those um, hallucinogens actually into your skin. You will hallucinate, and once you get to that point, you're just you're gone. I mean, you can take a um, milk thistle, which um, stops that. That's why I say carry milk thistle seeds, um, 
or some kind of extract of milk thistle with you. So if you actually end up eating an alkaloid or get alkaloid absorbed in your skin, you can actually try to stop that LSD um, experience that you might have. Um, another one is angel trumpet. Angel trumpet is a beautiful plant. A lot of people plant it in Florida. Um, I've actually seen a couple down in here in Southern California. But it, it grows a big, humongous, white trumpet flower. And just sitting up under that tree, especially in a rainstorm, can actually get you high like an LSD trip. They use it in India for, um, for doing all kinds of um, ritual um, um, hallucinogenic trips to commune with their god or whatever. But um, you want to really um, make sure you, when you're messing around with alcoholic plants, to, to kind of have some kind of milk thistle that will actually stop it. Um, or some equivalent to milk thistle that will actually stop the liver um, the, the process of going to the hallucinogenic trip. I've trip on LSD many a times. I know what the experience is, and it, it, it's a life-changing experience. Um, it can be scary for some people. They've never been through one. Um, every fear that you ever had is going to come out in that experience. Your reality, as you know it, is not the same. So the sooner you stop that, the better. I mean, it, it can be a fun experience, but it can be a living hell as well. And it can last just a week. LSD lasts roughly about 12 hours. Um, that would be um, air the arrogant fungus um, experience. Morning glory, I mean, it can last pretty much all night, roughly about eight hours. But um, you get into the gym some way and you start absorbing that, you can literally trip for three days. And it's going to be a living hell. And a lot of people, kids, um, take the seeds and they eat them. They actually die from doing that. So make sure that you um, have some kind of way of stopping poison. Have that in your survival pack. Some way of stopping poison. Benadryl is definitely a must. Uh, charcoal. Always have that campfire charcoal ready from non poisonous plants. Um, and just use some common sense. Vomit. Get that potato inside of you. Um, get that corn starch, some kind of starchy food, and you'll pretty much save yourself from a very, very bad experience sometimes. There are some plants, like I said, poison hemlock, um, orlander. Um, once you eat it and, and you've gone, um, had that experience, chances are you're going to die. It, it, it's no one mistake, you're dead. That's why I say when you start saying the parsley carrot family, you need to really pay attention. You don't go out there playing games. This is very, very serious, um, and sometimes. And uh, when I was a kid, I used to go smoking this herb I called bugle weed and rabbit weed, and I didn't know what I was doing. I could have smoked something that could have seriously killed me as a kid. So, um, you no, know, be smart. Don't be dumb, and uh, take it very seriously. It's, it's. You're playing Russian roulette every time you do that. Even if you, it is a safe edible plant, people have allergies to plants like nuts, peanuts, um, you know, soy, wheat, whatever. People do have reactions. So be prepared. When you're experiencing a new food, um, you need to watch that. If you're experiencing nut allergies and there's a nut that you never heard of in a while, don't eat it. Just plain and simple, don't eat it. You're probably going to react the same way. And um, just be very careful. You know, if you're allergic to wheat, you most likely will be allergic to all types of grasses. You know, I mean, there's some that you may not be. You might not be allergic to oats, but you're allergic to the wheat or rye. So make sure when you're experiencing those plants, and they're in the same family, kind of keep the idea you need to stay away from those plants. And if you listen to this advice, um, you're pretty much going to have a safe experience. But take it slow. Take it easy. Like I said, if you're gonna, uh, it's a life and death serious situation. You have no choice. You know you're gonna starve to death. And you don't mind taking that risk because eventually you're gonna die anyways. Only in that case, take a little tiny pea size or a lentil size piece of the plant, put it in your mouth. If you get sick, instantly stop. Um, get the poison out. Stop taking that plant. But, um, if you don't get sick, go a little farther. Do two sides of peas and just keep doing that daily. On the way 24 hours, no ill effects will happen. Take it again the next day. 
um, double so those can keep doubling the dose until you get a healthy um, edible source and you know that you can eat a bowl of you know sea rocket leaves and, and you're not going to get sick you're not going to have any allergic action there's no central nervous or heart um, things going on if it are laxing the thing that would actually hurt you so it's better to experiment over a long period of time with one plan than to just eat a whole bunch of it and go oh gosh I just made a mistake and now you're dead and, um, but that's only a life situation don't ever do this for any other reason unless you know you're going to die um, but even if you're not going to die you're in the mint family like I said if it's, if it's all safe you might have allergic reactions to certain plants so just take little bits of it at a time and work your way by the end of the week, you're going to know if that's edible and safe for you. It may not be safe for somebody else who has a allergic reaction, but it'll be safe for you. So never assume just because it's safe for you, it's safe for somebody else. Always give them the chance to build up. Don't go, well, this is totally safe for me. You can eat plenty of it. Well, it may be safe for them as well. But give them the chance to get that reaction because if they, have a, they eat a bowl of something, all of a sudden they get a major reaction. You're out in the woods. You don't have Benadryl. You don't have a way of stopping this poison. You just killed somebody. Are you seriously made them sick right here? So take it very seriously. Um, I can't. I can't stress that enough. This is not a game. This is Russian roulette sometimes. And you know, the more knowledge that you build up, the better you'll feel confident out there, and the better you'll be out there. But um, this is Michael. Um, Hope you're enjoying these videos. I know they're kind of boring with the background. There's no outdoor stuff here. Um, I'm inside of a tent. I've been in this tent for 20 days um, out in the desert, in the Sonoran Desert. And I'm just trying to get these videos uploaded so I can go back out, out in the desert and explore more. And I'm trying to get some more videos of outdoors. I will eventually do that. But it's been fun. Thank you very much.